My own spiritual awakening years ago has served as a spiritual touchstone for me ever since. In today's video, I want to talk about what a spiritual touchstone is, what are the different kinds of them, and how it can be useful to you. Hey everyone, I'm Sonia and this is Holiness Connection. And this video is part of my series, Deep Calling Deep, which explores deep connection with yourself, with others, and with spirit. So this idea, this definition of a touchstone originally came from a kind of stone that was used for marking an alloy of gold to test the color. So it had this idea of testing something against it. How we use it now is often more um, with an idea of comparing it in the sense of a way of recognizing what something is. And I'm using it maybe even a little more broadly than that when I say a spiritual touchstone. So what I mean by that is that it is something, and we'll go into the kinds in a minute here, it is something which allows you to have that feeling of alignment both to have the feeling in a way of remembering that and what that feels like and also as its own portal into re-experiencing that and coming into alignment spiritually. So to, just to touch briefly again on what I said in the introduction about my own spiritual awakening and how that served as my main spiritual touchstone all these years, um, what I mean by that is that the experience was so profound, it was such a profound feeling state that while I don't feel like I'm continuously in that state like I was then, I can recall it, I can remember it and bring it um, back to me just by thinking of those times and some of those days and what that experience felt like. And when I feel into that, um, I can remember that feeling of both expansion and groundedness at the same time, for example. Then that feeling state is what I especially use to get back into that feeling of alignment. And so if at any time I take a moment to remember that and to kind of use it, at, like I said, as that kind of almost a portal into that feeling state, that can help bring me into that feeling of spiritual alignment. Um, and people have different words, perhaps, for what that is, that feeling of, I think, being in touch with something deeper and bigger than sometimes what our minds are processing on a given day. So we kind of have that sense of the bigger picture and the connectedness of things. So again, it's very much about both the feeling of what that felt like and also at the same time serves as a portal into feeling that way again. So that's my main spiritual touchstone. And it's an example of the first kind of spiritual touchstone that I want to talk about today, which is a memory or an experience. So what is a way that you could do this? Let's say, I, you know, I go pretty quickly into that one, partly because I had, I had that experience for quite a while where I was in that feeling state. But you could cultivate it more and actually go into it. And let me give you an example of how you could do this. So if you're wanting to use a particular memory or experience as a spiritual touchstone, what I recommend that you do, and it might help to close your eyes, is to really get back, immerse yourself into that memory or that experience. And so try to imagine in your mind's eye what it looked like, who is there with you, and then really the senses too, like what did it feel like? So that can mean the senses in the traditional um, way of visuals, smells, anything you were feeling on your skin, maybe the temperature, um, or sounds, things like that. It can also mean kind of like what I described with my spiritual awake awakening, what those inner like senses were. Was there a feeling of expansion? Was there a feeling of warmth? You know, even if it wasn't a warm day, but more that internal warmth, like what was that for you? And so feel and immerse really deeply into that. And that will reconnect you to the feeling state um, that's the way of cultivating that. And then that sir, can then serve as that portal into that remembrance of that experience in a way where it can be a spiritual touchstone for feeling that way and remembering that alignment in your current moment. So that's the first kind is a memory or experience. And the second one is something physical. So a physical could be a, like a physical object, for example. So this could be something symbolic for you. So it helps that helps you remember something important to you, a spiritual value, or, or maybe it was a spiritual experience you had 
but this object is symbolic of that for you. Or it could actually be some sort of remembrance from that time. For example, I remember one time I was feeling really connected to this certain kind of tree and I brought home, I wasn't even thinking of this as a spiritual touchstone, but it could have served that way. Um, I brought home a piece of fallen bark from the tree that was very fragrant. So, so whatever that is, so maybe it's a remembrance of something or a particular experience or place. If it's symbolic, it could be symbolic of that experience, or maybe it could be symbolic of some sort of guidance that you felt like you had. For example, it could be traditional prayer beads. It could be a cross. It, so it could be symbolic in one of those more traditional ways, or maybe it's something that just has that personal symbolism for you. Like maybe you had an animal encounter and it's a symbol of that animal. It's a small little uh, figure of that animal or something like that. So for this kind of spiritual touchstone, sometimes someone might wear it, you know, like with a cross or with prayer beads. Maybe they would have it in their pocket and you could actually like really have it be a touchstone literally in the sense that you touch it every now and then and that's that physical memory that you're bringing in there of association. Um, and you can certainly also cultivate it by taking that object and you with prayer beads people often pray on each bead. You could also just you know take it and look at it in your hands and move it around in your hands if you wanted to cultivate it at a particular moment and have it be that spiritual touchstone to help you align. Maybe your spiritual touchstone is a place. So it could be a place in nature. Maybe it's a favorite chapel or place of worship. Maybe you crea have created your own altar in order to cultivate having a place like this where you feel like you come into alignment more on going there or on looking at it. If it's a place that isn't easy to get to, you could perhaps put up a picture of it and that could be how you view it. And and connect to that place. If you're able to go there in person, that's also wonderful. And if it's an altar, of course, you can already put things on the altar that, that help you to align, or perhaps it's in a particular place that gets the afternoon sun a certain way, so it could be part of the experience of being in that place. Um, but the idea with the altar is a little different simply because you can be cultivating it. So you can be cultivating what it's on. It may actually be gradually shifting a little over time. And so you're creating that experience and able to cultivate your alignment with that place that you are developing yourself. So a fourth and final kind of spiritual touchstone that I'll cover today is a particular word or phrase. So some people have a particular mantra that they use in meditation, so it could be that. In centering prayer, there is a word that we use to gently come back to the practice if we've gotten lost in thoughts, for example. Or maybe it's simply a word or phrase that has a lot of meaning for you on your spiritual journey. So whatever that is for you, there's various ways that you can work with it. So one way would be to put it up. Sometimes people like to put up words or phrases that they can see and so have that visual recognition of it during the course of their day. As I mentioned, maybe it's part of meditation and how you align for a meditation. Or maybe it's simply pondering the word, you know, whether you're saying it out loud or whether you're just thinking it to yourself. That word ruminate actually comes from the kind of like chewing, chewing the cud like a cow. So giving yourself some moments to really chew on the word and that feeling of the meaning to you and letting it take you where it will and having an experience with that word and its meaning for you would be a way also of cultivating your use of a word or phrase as a spiritual touchstone. And one example that I can give here is that for quite a while, for a couple of years, I had a spiritual touchstone with the phrase, be still and know that I am God. So I would lie down. And what's nice about this one is you can drop away a word at the end and it, and it has actually sort of a whole transformation of meaning as you say it. So it's be still and know that I'm God. And then be still and know that I am and then be still and know, and then be still, and finally be. So working with that was a very meditative, ruminative way of getting that deeper meaning, where I had felt that connection as a spiritual touchstone to the phrase, and it was a way of working with the meaning more deeply and as practice. 
So I mentioned earlier that this video is part of my Deep Calling Deep series, and I wanted to say a little more here about how spiritual touchstones apply to this. So in Deep Calling Deep, I'm talking about kind of a triad, which is our connection to others, our connection to ourselves, and our connection to spirit. And the spiritual touchstones in this video are applying to our connection to spirit and how we can cultivate that with this kind of touching in and alignment. But keep in mind that all of the sides of this triangle or triad really are flowing together. So when you cultivate connection to yourself, that naturally fosters deeper connection with others and with spirit as well. And so the same here where this deeper connection with spirit also fosters deeper connection with others and with ourselves. So hopefully that gives you some ideas of both what a spiritual touchstone is, how you can use it in your life, and what some kinds of different spiritual touchstones are. I would love to hear in the comments what your spiritual touchstone is.